Batman has created the ultimate weapon to stop himself. Batman created a mental state known as zur -N -R. He is the ultimate Batman, a Batman without anything holding him back from being Batman. He did it as a way to prevent himself from falling to his own trappings. The ultimate Batman who can stop anything without being hindered by things like the Bat family or love. Many issues ago, the Penguin was killed and he blamed his death on Batman. This zur -N -R Batman, the ultimate Batman, had built a robot that would go out and murder Batman if he was found to have murdered somebody. Failsafe the robot proceeded to then seemingly kill Batman, but at the last second, they programmed him to have compassion. With this compassion, Failsafe the robot teleported Batman to a Gotham that didn't have a Batman, where he then was able to start over, become a new, brand new, reborn Batman. He then chased a villain known as Halliday, who went through the multiverse creating a dozen new Jokers. And it was Tim Drake who eventually showed up and brought Batman home. Bruce Wayne is now broken. zor -R is locked away in Batman's brain again. Failsafe is missing, and Bruce just doesn't know what to do next. Today is Batman issue 136, and this is Comic Story, and I create audio dramas of your favorite comic books. And today we're going to be continuing the story of Batman's multiversal adventures. After returning from a series of jumps through the multiverse, Batman sits up in his bed in the Batacombs, thinking that he's fine. Mr. Terrific looks at the charts, telling him that he does heal remarkably fast, so he's inclined to agree. Though there is still some residual multiversal energy from his trip, Batman gets dressed, telling him that it's harmless. It'll dissipate with time. Thanks for sticking around, Gotham. Thanks for keeping an eye on me, Mr. Terrific. It's my pleasure, but... I would be remiss if I didn't ask about... Batman looks at his hand. The hand that he has now lost and replaced with a robotic one. And he tells Mr. Terrific that he'd appreciate it if he just kept the robotic hand between them. While getting ready to leave, there's a call on the comms. And when Batman answers, Tim says that he was just checking in to see how Batman was doing. Batman tells him that he's fine, and Tim says if he says so. But maybe he should take the night off, and... Batman stops him. I'm fine. Any major developments since I've been away? Tim tells him that with the penguin dead, two of his kids showed up to run the iceberg lounge. Then there's Selena. Batman takes a moment to himself to meditate, to center himself from everything that just recently happened. Failsafe, the robotic Batman, is still out there. Red Mask created an entire multiverse of Jokers. And then there's Zervinar the psychotic version of Batman in his own mind that he created as his own ultimate Batman. Zura calls out to Bruce, telling him, My name is Batman. Bruce tells him, No, you're a backup human operating system. <laughs> I'm the real you. I was created in the event your mind was under attack. Well, it is under attack by Batman by your insecurities and your doubts. And when Batman has doubts, people die. I won't let that happen. You've been locked away. You don't have any power anymore. And Zoranar laughs. <laughs> That's interesting, locked away, instead of being destroyed. It's because you can't without destroying your own mind, Bruce. Or is it because you need me? You need me for what's coming, right? Because Batman can't be weak. Bruce shakes his head, grounding himself back to reality, realizing that during his time meditating, there were dozens of calls. Dick, Barbara, Duke, Stephanie, Clark, they all want to know how Bruce is. Bruce is hurt. Bruce is lost. But Batman isn't. Later at the Iceberg Lounge, Addison and Aiden Cobblepot have expanded upon their late father's work, creating an off-the-books back room for Gotham's high rollers. Even though Bruce has been away, it's his job to remind them that Batman still watches the streets. Just as the next hand is dealt, Batman activates the explosions and drops in on the table, calling out to Addison and Aiden, telling them that they're just as greedy as their father was. Addison yells, In business, you're either growing or dying! Heard you already passed the ladder. Batman jumps down. I don't die. Just ask your father if you have a Ouija board handy. 
Aiden, however, winds up telling him to get away from his sister, but Batman has already predicted how Aiden would react. But what he didn't predict was how fast he actually was. So much so that before Batman could even get a footing, Aiden has already charged and thrown him into the bathroom and was choking him. He underestimated him, and now he knows Aiden can take it. Batman reaches out to grab Aiden's hand, and as he crushes it, he looks at his new hand, not realizing the strength that a robotic hand could have. He hides the surprised look, getting up, telling Addison to consider this a warning. And after leaving there, Batman radios into Babs to follow up on something that Tim mentioned. Something about Selina. Batman's informed that there was a breakout and a handful of inmates escaped, but nobody has heard from Selina since she got out of prison. It's possible that she may have skipped town. They'll keep an eye out for her for him. But there's something else. Babs asks Batman, Did you take off your monitoring systems? I'm not getting a read on your physical condition. Batman ends the transmission. I'm fine. Which is only partly true. Batman is fine, but Bruce Wayne is not. And this is the only way that it works out. The next day, a woman stops by a bagel and coffee shop for a late afternoon snack when a voice calls out to her from the shadows. Cats are creatures of habit. The woman scoffs. Bat. After ditching the disguise, Selina says that she heard that he was back in town. Some grand adventure in space this time. Batman says that she broke out of prison. She tells him, yeah. It wasn't doing it for her anymore. It's been weeks since they've seen each other and he's going to, what, bring her in, reprimand her? Batman says that she killed Valmont to save him. I don't like it, but you don't deserve a life in prison. We've all had to make hard choices and you turned down my help. My lawyer, Selina. So, she asks him, I freed myself instead of using your money. I'm a ghost now. And maybe that's what I want to be for now. A fresh start, something new. Like Oswald. Batman stares. What? You may have been hung up on not being able to save him, but it was all a lie. The Penguin just wanted out. He wanted to get away from the back and forth. He faked his own death, Bruce. I wasn't sure if I should tell you, but Oswald left town and settled elsewhere. Batman stumbles back. Failsafe. The robot I created, it came after me, my family, all because it thought I killed Cobblepot, and you kept that from me. We're not supposed to have secrets from each other. She looks at him. The two of us are nothing but secrets, Bruce. Don't even pretend like we're not. I love you, but our lives? I wasn't in space. I was in another universe, another Gotham. There was a Selina there too. I couldn't help but love her as well. That's the kind of hold you have over me. And you betrayed me. She sighs. Your life. I'm not the other Selina. I'm my own person. And I didn't know that you created some damn robot to kill yourself. I didn't know either. Wow. To think I kept secrets from you. As she leaves, Batman just sits there when an alarm goes off signaling an intruder in the manor. He hurries over, looking down at the hole that Zoranar made for himself. A cave beneath his own. A place where Failsafe was created. And then there's a noise coming from upstairs. Batman quietly sneaks out from behind the clock, hearing the voices, happy voices and laughter. He steps into the kitchen, and he sees all of his children there making breakfast. Just as he's about to ask what's going on, Jason looks at him. Yeah, they tricked me to be here too. Seconds later, Dick and Babs enter, stating that they're sorry for being late. Dick says that it was his idea to trip the censors, figured it'd be the only way to make sure that Bruce got here in a hurry. Besides that, it's time to eat! Come on, Bruce! Bruce follows, taking in the scene, seeing so many of his children there, happy. They're all young men and women who have followed him into his life. People who still feel joy, even if it's sparingly. Then Dick walks up, stating that Tim told him about Zernar. Is everything all right? Yes, Zernar is locked away. There's nothing to worry about. Except, there is. Zernar has poisoned the well. He put doubt in into Bruce's mind. He created Failsafe. He built a Zoranar cave beneath the other cave. What else did Zoranar do? He can see the end coming. No, wait, that's not it. He can feel the end coming and he can't see it. He's blind, blind as a bat. How does he save everyone here? Everyone that he loves. How far can Batman go? How far can Bruce go before it all burns away?
But there's a little story that was added to this particular issue. It's called The Plans Below, and we see how Zurinar operated. We need to jump back in time, to a time when Zurinar existed, but a time before Bruce knew what he was doing. As Bruce Wayne is working away at his desk, Alfred knocks on the door. I know you may think of yourself as above mere mortals, but two hours of sleep is not enough to. Bruce laughs. <laughs> I'm fine, Alfred. I'll take my morning coffee and caddy comments to go. Right now, there's work to be done. He takes his coffee down to the cave, going over Riddler's latest riddle when something changes. He seems to snap into a different personality. He turns back, activating a hidden switch that opens up a hatch to a hidden room in the cave. One with a whole new bat suit. He pulls on a purple mask, and Zoran R, through Bruce's body, says, Ha! Now let's see how you're coming along. Zoran R activates failsafe, and the robot says, Alert mode activated. Good, what are your directives? To observe Batman via global chatter and witness behaviors. If there is a 95% probability that he willingly took a life, I am to eliminate Batman. Ha <laughs> ha! And how will you go about it? I will kill Batman, a conundrum, a paradox, to murder a man for the crime of murder. Zoranar steps over into the training area. Batman isn't just a man. He's a force of nature. And if he's got a taste for blood, he'll never stop killing. That blood will run into Gotham's soil and a new world will grow in its place. Zur looks at Failsafe. Can you kill him? Failsafe shuffles out of his capsule. Yes. Show me. Zoranar begins to spar with the robot, but soon Failsafe grabs him. I will observe and make determinations, and it appears Batman has gone too far, which means... Zur grabs two injectors, slamming them into Failsafe. Failsafe eases back. You cannot... And Zer scoffs. Ha! Time to get back to work. My programming is incomplete. When I accomplish my mission, then what? Zernar tosses Failsafe back into his capsule. I'll be back with your next update. He takes off the mask, walking back to the computer, and goes through the prior night's arrest. Mugger got lucky last night. Landed a 2 by 4 in my chest. Be better, Bruce. Soon after that, Bruce blinks, continuing his research on the Riddler, completely unaware that he is now missing 20 minutes. And there you have it, Batman 136. Now, I was going to wait for a few issues, but this kind of felt like the perfect Bridger issue to come out of Batman and the Batverse and set us up for the next big storyline. Plus, I also wanted to bring you that backup that kind of gives you the origins of Failsafe. I thought you guys would enjoy that one. This is an incredible Batman book. Chip Zdarsky, the writer for this, is just doing incredible work with this. And I love it. It's one of my favorite Batman stories. So I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and we'll be back with more very soon.